Hey guys, how's it going? So last time we talked about data and distributions and things like that. Now we're going to move on to probability. So let's go ahead and get started with the basics of probability, the notation and the words that we use, just so we can define those and from there move on to doing problems. So first things first, sample space. So sample space is essentially a set of all possible outcomes. So basically, if we talk about a particular situation, there are multiple different outcomes. Once we have all those outcomes, that's considered our sample space. So now, let's talk about flipping two quarters. So flipping two quarters, what's the sample space for that? And you're correct if you're thinking that there's four possible outcomes. So if we have two quarters, we're talking about heads and tails, right? We have tails, tails. Right? So you flip two quarters, you get tails first time, tails the second time. What's another possibility? We get heads and a tail. We get tail and heads. And the last one is two heads, right? So those are four possible outcomes that's considered our sample space. Now, events, events are basically a particular set of outcomes. So within the sample space, there's a bunch of different possible events, right? And so let's go ahead and look at a couple. We have the first one, event A. That is two tails. So two tails, how many possible outcomes is that? It's only one, right? You roll, you flip it, get a tail, flip it again, get a tail. Now event B is one head, one tail. Now we're not actually particular about the order of the heads or the tail, right? We just say one head and one tail overall. So what that tells us is that it takes two possible outcomes because we get heads, tails, and tail heads. Those are two outcomes that are in that particular event. Now the last one is two heads. And there's just only one way of doing that, right? You flip it, you get heads, you flip it again, you get heads. So those are different events within the overarching sample space. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So next, each event has a probability associated with it between, so the possibility of any of these events happening or the likelihood of any of these events happening is actually between zero and one. And what that basically means is zero percent to 100%, right? Because there's a zero chance of happening, it's gonna be zero. We're never gonna have negative. There's no such thing as a negative probability. So if there's a 0% chance of something happening, it's never gonna happen. Does that make sense? If there's a 100% chance of something happening, that's the only thing that's gonna be happening, right? So that's the only outcome that will be occurring. So now the possible the possibility of I'm sorry, the probability of all possible outcomes which basically is our sample space. If we take everything into account, what's the probability of the, within that sample space? It's going to be 1 because we're taking every possible angle into account. Does that make sense? So now, if two events cannot occur simultaneously, they are considered disjoint. Now another way some books may go ahead and describe this is mutually exclusive. Right? So if two events are mutually exclusive, they basically can't ever happen at the same time. So one easy example, and I'm talking about in general, not any particular odd cases, uh, but if you're, if you're about to give birth, right, there's two possibilities. You're either going to have a boy or a girl. Can you have a boy and a girl? Maybe, that's a small chance, but um, essentially the child would normally just come out as a boy or as a girl, not a mix of both. Does that make sense? So those two events, having a boy or a girl, are considered disjoint because they would never occur simultaneously. Now, all the outcomes not covered by an event is considered the complement. Right? And so if we are talking about a die, roll a die, we get one. Right? So event A could be rolling a one. Now what's the complement of A? It's rolling anything but a one. Does that make sense? So it, the complement of any event is basically all the other possibilities that this event in particular does not take into account. Cool? So now let's talk about the notation real quick because we're going to be using this and I'm going to write these assuming that you guys already know what these mean. So hopefully this will stick um, and if not just feel free to rewatch the video if you get a little lost and I'll explain it of course as we're going. But probability, I'm sorry, P of A that's probability of event A. Probability, I mean, P of A, and you see a little upside down you looking thing, that's called an intersection. It's probability of event 
events A and B. So events A and B, and the, the way I kind of tell that is, see this little guy here, it kind of looks like an A, which kind of is the beginning of and. That's the only way I remembered it when I first took these classes and I wasn't really sure to tell the difference is that it's an upside down U, but cool. It kind of looks like an A, which A is part of the, be I'm sorry, the beginning of the word and. So it tells me that it's and. Now the next one is P of A, and that's called a union. So union is events A or B. So it's a little different. So event A and B is both of them happening simultaneously. Now the union is A or B. So it can happen at the same time and there's a possibility of them happening together. So now the last one is complement. So P of A with the little C on top. There may be a couple other different notations. Um, for example, you could also have P of A with the little prime there. But essentially it's the complement of event A. So again, remember complement is essentially all the outcomes that aren't covered by a particular event or subset of the sample space. Cool, so now I have a little Venn diagram here. We're going to be referring to that to talk about our next three examples. And these examples are just conceptual questions. They're not really anything super applied. It's just to make sure that we have these ideas down because I'm going to be using and referring to them once we move on to subsequent um, chapter, I mean, I'm sorry, topics. So which, if any, events are disjoint from event A? So remember event A back up here was what? It was two tails, right? So event A is two tails, and then we have event B and event C. So which of those are disjoint from A? So the ones that are disjoint from event A, it basically just C, because C is totally different, right? So A kind of has this tails, tails, B, there's a little tail in both of them, right? So B can happen sort of at the same time that A happens. And then we have C, which C is just totally different. It's heads, heads. So there is no kind of intersection between those two. So these are disjoint. Now, which, if any, events are, complement, are the complement of C? Now, the complement of C, so C is in particular two heads, right? So the complement of two heads are all the other outcomes. So the only outcomes that C takes into account is heads, heads, right? So all other outcomes are events A and B. Next, what is the probability of events A and C occurring? So we want A and C to occur simultaneously. So the probability of A and C occurring, they're actually disjoint, right? So events A and C are disjoint. So can they ever happen at the same time? Because we have heads, heads, and tails, tails. There's not really any intersection of anything. So those are disjoint. And so the probability of both occurring, aka A and B, is zero. Now events A or C. What about probability of A or C? I'm sorry. So the probability of A or C is actually 50%. And the reason for that, let me go ahead and write this, it's 50% or 0.50. Remember we use decimal places in statistics. Um, the reason why it's 50% is because event A and C, right, are these two here. The one on the top left, let me, see, let me move down a little bit so that I can kind of actually reach for them. <laughs> so event A is all the way on the left hand side, right? And then we have event C over here. Now how many outcomes does that really take into account? I mean, I'm sorry, how many, um, how many events or how many possibilities does that take outside of the entire sample space? So that's actually two possible outcomes, right? So it's two out of what's the total number of outcomes? two out of four, right? So we have two, you're gonna write this in blue. It's basically two outcomes are taken into account when we say A or C out of four. 
So that's a half, aka 0.5. Does that make sense? So if they only take up two outcomes, the probability of event A or C is just, here's those two outcomes that could likely happen out of our total sample space which included four outcomes. Cool? So those are probability basics. Let's go ahead and apply these concepts into some math, some practice problems um, in subsequent sections. So until next time.